Every time you call a function, the CPU gives you a stack frame, a fast temporary block of memory for your local variables. That's a memory arena, and it's why locals are so cheap. But sometimes, especially when building trees or recursive graphs, you can't avoid allocations. And every heap allocation means garbage collection. Game engines have solved this for decades with memory arenas, fixed size allocators that avoid fragmentation and GC entirely. In this video, we're gonna build our own, a minimal raw memory system that lets us allocate hundreds of temporary objects on the heap, skip the garbage collector entirely, and reset everything in a single call. Before we jump into allocating memory, we need something to allocate. Let's build a small data model that we can use to simulate a graph-like problem. Let's use crafting, because crafting is an excellent stand-in for recursive tree-shaped logic. Every item will be made up of ingredients, and some of those ingredients are recipes themselves. That gives us a graph, or more precisely a tree, where each node may have subnodes and the whole structure is built at runtime. So let's define our items, recipes, and inventory and once we have that structure in place, we use the arena to simulate it without touching the garbage collector. So we've got five basic item types and a very small inventory that's really just a wrapper around a dictionary that keeps track of how many of each item we actually have. We'll be able to add more to the inventory if we want, and we'll be able to get a count at any time. Let's create a struct to represent an ingredient. This will just be an item type and the number required. We can use ingredients to make up recipes. A recipe will output some kind of item, and making the item will require an array of ingredients. Let's take both of these in through the constructor, and we'll just leave it that simple. We can go a little bit further, and we could have an entire book full of recipes. So maybe our player is collecting recipes along the way, and assuming that each item type can be created by only one recipe, then we can just represent it with a dictionary. Then we just need two methods, one to add to our recipe book, and one to get a recipe out of the book. Now with our item, recipe, and inventory system in place, we have everything we need to build a dynamic recursive structure. So let's switch gears and create the memory arena allocator that will manage all this memory without hitting the GC. I've got some basic using statements, but I'm going to add the lowlevel.unsafe library. This will give us direct access to raw memory operations like malloc, free, and pointer casting, bypassing the safety of C-sharp's managed runtime. It's powerful, fast, and completely your responsibility. Now I'm going to define the arena allocator using the unsafe keyword. Using the unsafe keyword unlocks pointer access in C-sharp. It's what lets us step outside the managed runtime and work with memory directly. Notice, however, I immediately get two compiler errors. One of them is because I haven't implemented the dispose method for the iDisposable interface, but the other one is underneath the unsafe keyword. We can get a bit more clarity inside of Unity. You can see here in the console, it's telling me to enable allow unsafe code in player settings to fix that error. So in player settings, all the way down near the bottom, you can see here, allow unsafe code. I'm just gonna turn that on and that'll prompt a recompile. Now we're just missing our dispose method. So let's head back to code. For now, to get rid of our red squiggly, let's just have a no op dispose. Now the allocator itself is going to manage a manually allocated block of unmanaged memory. Let's start with a raw pointer to the start of our memory block. Then let's also have an integer to represent how much of the arena we've actually used. So the offset will represent how far into our block of memory we are. Then we'll also have an int that will represent the total size of the arena in bytes, and we'll set that in the constructor. So here we can use Unity's unsafe utility malloc method. Malloc allocates a block of raw, uninitialized memory on the unmanaged heap and returns a pointer to its starting address. It takes three parameters. The first one is how much memory we want. The second is for alignment. Alignment means storing data at memory addresses that are multiples of its size, like putting a four byte integer at addresses divisible by four. We'll use 16 byte alignment because it safely covers all typical data types, including structs like Vector3 or Quaternion, and ensures compatibility with SIMD operations on modern CPUs. The last param is an enum value that's gonna tell Unity how long we want this memory for, and we wanna keep it until we decide to release it ourselves, so I'm gonna use the persistent value. Then let's start our offset at position zero, and we'll set our capacity to be the total size in bytes. So this gives us a chunk of memory we can use for our memory arena. Now we'll create a method that will reserve space for one or more values of type T inside of our memory arena's buffer. I'm gonna add the constraint that T has to be unmanaged. 
That means that T can only contain fixed size, blittable data, no references, no GC managed fields, so it can be safely allocated in raw memory and used with pointers without risking memory corruption or runtime exceptions. Let's calculate the actual size in bytes of T. Now we know how much memory we want out of our buffer, so let's make sure we're not actually going over capacity. If we are, throw an exception. If we have enough room in our memory arena, let's cast a slice of the buffer to a pointer of type T. Then we'll move the offset forward so that the next allocation doesn't overwrite this space, and we'll return a typed pointer to the caller. And that's all there is to it, more or less. We can add a reset method so that our offset comes back to zero the next time we want to use this chunk of memory. And to wrap it up, let's finish our dispose method. So if the buffer isn't null, we have unmanaged memory to free. Unity has a convenient free method. It's just going to release the memory that we allocated with malloc. And then we'll just set our pointer to null to avoid any dangling references. So that's it for a simple memory arena. Let's put it to work. So to build our craft simulator, we're going to create a graph of nodes. Each node needs to know the type of item that this node produces, how many of this item we need, how many of this item we actually have available, either directly or through crafting, a pointer to an array of subnodes, which would be ingredients. The double asterisk means that it's a pointer to a pointer. Then we'll have the number of ingredients, so the length of the subingredients array. Now we can create a class that will actually run our craft simulator. We need a reference to our recipe book, and we'll need a reference to our inventory. We can wire up those dependencies through the constructor. So now we can create our recursive algorithm. We're going to simulate how we'd craft a given item using the arena for all of our memory. So the first thing we're going to do is allocate a new craft node from the arena. Then we can fill in the basic info, the output type, and the amount needed. Now let's try and get the recipe out of the book. If it has a recipe, we'll need space for all of its ingredients. Let's allocate an array of craft node pointers, one for each ingredient. We cast the raw memory to the right type so that we can index into it like a normal array. Now let's start our algorithm by assuming we can craft an infinite number. Then we'll clamp down as we inspect each ingredient. So let's loop over each ingredient in the recipe. For each ingredient in the recipe, we'll figure out how many of this ingredient we actually need for the amount of product we want to produce. Then recursively simulate crafting the ingredient. Each call into simulate craft returns a pointer to a craft node. We can store that pointer in the subingredients pointer array. Now we can calculate how many times this subnode can satisfy its requirement. How many crafts are possible? Let's clamp the max craftable amount down to the limiting ingredient. Now we're almost done the algorithm. I'm just going to give a little bit more space. Outside of our loop, we can set how many of the target item we can craft based on its ingredients. If there's no recipe for this item, we'll treat it as a base resource, something you either already have in inventory or you can't craft further. So we'll set the sub count to zero. There's no sub ingredients. We don't need to allocate any space here because there are no children, so we can just set that to null. And we can look up how many of this item the player currently has in inventory. This becomes the supply we can draw from during the simulation. Now we're all finished. Let's return the pointer to the node that we just built. Well, that's all we need for our simulator. Let's create a mono behavior that'll add some inventory items and some recipes, and we can try this out. So over here in our example class, let's have a recipe book and an inventory. This way, in the start method, we can set up all the data we want to use. We can have a new recipe book, a new inventory, and then let's add our first recipe, an iron ingot. It's made from two iron ore. Then we can have a higher level recipe, an iron sword, that's made from three iron ingots and one stick. Since iron ingot is itself craftable, this will create a recursive structure. Now, we need some base resources, so to our inventory, let's add some iron ore, let's say 10, and let's add three sticks. Now, at runtime, if I want to be able to tell my player how many iron swords they can make with their ingredients, we can use our arena allocator and our craft simulator to quickly do that. In the start method, let's calculate the size of the craft node, and we'll create a new arena that can handle 10 craft nodes, let's say. We could just inline this variable actually and keep this a little bit more concise. Of course, an arena that can only handle 10 craft nodes isn't very big, but it's good enough for this example. In a real system, you'd size this based on max depth or expected complexity. Next, let's create our craft simulator, which needs a reference to our recipe book and our inventory. Now here's where it's all gonna come together. We're gonna simulate crafting one iron sword. 
This returns a pointer to a craft node representing the root of our crafting tree. Everything below this, the iron ingots, the iron ore, the stick, is built recursively in the arena. Now we can get some output and we can dereference the pointer with the arrow to access the struct's fields. So first we can say whether or not we have enough ingredients to craft the sword and how many we could make based on our inventory. Then we could loop over the root sub-ingredients, again a pointer to an array of pointers, and log each sub-node. So each one represents an ingredient like iron ingot or stick, and we want to show how many we can craft versus how many are needed. This traversal works just like walking a regular tree, except we're doing it in unmanaged memory using raw pointers. Once we're done, we reset the arena. This clears the internal offset, making the memory reusable, just like rewinding a tape. All previous pointers are now invalid, but no GC has run and no memory has even been freed yet. Finally, when we destroy this object, we're going to dispose of that arena and free our unmanaged memory. Unlike managed code, this is entirely up to us. If you forget this step, you're going to start leaking memory. Well, why don't we go back into Unity and test? So here I've already added the example script to a game object. I'm just going to hit Control P. Right away in our console, we can see that, yes, I can craft one of one iron swords. And that's because I can craft five of the three required iron ingots. And I have three of the one stick that was required. So this is just a small example of how you could create a memory arena to give yourself a chunk of memory that you can manage yourself. Unity already has several native containers like native array, native list, native hash map, etc. that manage their own memory under the hood using similar methods. But these containers are flat. They're designed for contiguous linear memory. They're great for arrays, buffers, and maps, but they're not so great for recursive trees or graphs or pointer chains or dynamic per element memory. But their linear structure makes them great for things like jobs and burst. It's really interesting and enlightening actually to look at the code that makes those things run. Back here in Rider, I'm just going to add one more line to our code here so that we can just click through. Let's declare a new native array of type ingredient, for example. If I were to click through here, Rider will take me right to the decompiled constructor. Here in the constructor, we can see the first thing that it does is actually allocate memory. This should look very similar to what we built before. Now, one difference is here they're giving the option to clear the memory. And if that was set, they're using the mem clear method, which just sets everything to zeros inside the block. Just a little further down, we're going to find the definition of this static allocate method. You can see it's doing a lot of things that are similar to what we wrote before. It calculates how many bytes are needed by multiplying the size of a single type T by the number of elements. It checks that the length isn't negative and that the allocator type is valid. It makes sure that T is an unmanaged type. And then it's using the malloc tract method to actually allocate the memory, just like we were doing before. Here, malloc track also registers the allocation for leak detection in the Unity profiler. So you can use that too if you like. Notice here that they're calculating the alignment based on the type T. So if T was float 4, for example, it would use 16. Then it's just setting some metadata and creating some safety handles, which are part of Unity's jobs and burst safety system. So that's a look at how we can take memory management into our own hands using a custom arena allocator. This isn't something you need for every project, but when you're building deep graphs, recursive systems, or you just need deterministic control over memory layout and lifetime, it becomes a powerful option. This pattern is conceptually similar to how you'd manage memory in C or C++ using malloc or a custom allocator, but here we're doing it inside of C Sharp using Unity's unsafe tools to get that same level of control. But that's where we're going to wrap it up for today. I think next week, maybe we'll dial it down to a more intermediate topic. So if you're interested in more advanced or intermediate Unity, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to join us on Discord. I'll throw another video up on the screen. Maybe I'll see you there.